which patients felt possessed by cannibalistic desires. Oh. Oblate missionary J.E. Sandon was the first to use the term in the 1920s while working in a Cree community in the western James Bay area. There he met a woman who claimed that she saw strangers who wanted to kill and devour her. Sandon referred to the woman's mental condition as psychoneurosis, a mental behavior disorder characterized by depression and anxiety. Over time, the condition came to be known as the Wendigo psychosis. However, whether this is a real fiction is still highly disputed discussion among the medical community today. Hmm. That's kind of creepy, eh? Now we're almost floating into the vampire territory. Almost. Yeah. Like, this... or zombies, right? Because zombies eat flesh. Yeah, so. well, for sure. It's a creepy shit, man. Creepy like... shit, man. Can't make this shit, man. Oh my god, that's a totally different guy. Let's talk about it another time. <laughs> yeah, we're 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 kind of dwindling off topic here, but yeah. I know, I know. No. Weird, weirdage. But I'm not. Um, I'm trying to look for any any recent stories or sightings. But I don't really. Oh, you see... want to know a recipe for creating a Wendigo? Uh sure. Because I, you know, I want to create one in my kitchen. Okay, here we go. Sure. This is one recipe for creating a Wendigo. <laughs> Excellent. Extreme hunger. Extreme hunger. Cold. Check. Check. Isolation. Check. <laughs> uh, <laughs> ever present threatening facts of life for many First Nations people living in the boreal forest. So. Basically, if you live there, yes, and you went for a long period of time without food, and you were alone, and you were cold, okay. Well, maybe you know. What if that's just that whole cannibalism, like faux pas kind of thing, like you know, right? Like it's not a good thing to be a cannibal. So, well, no, they of course, say that well, you're a monster, then, right? Right. Yeah. Eat or be eaten. Yeah, eat or be <laughs> eaten. That's true. God. Uh-huh. Not in the not in the best. No, way. no, no. So you have stories. I well, you know, I don't have anything good. <laughs> <laughs> I've been like, you know, looking at a few things to see if anybody's got any. You know, there was this one time when I went hunting. One time. Yeah, when I back in the day, <laughs> when I was dragged yeah. out to the forest for some ritualistic killing. No, yeah, I don't. <laughs> and I came across some other people. I uh, figured I'd eat them. Yeah. They were just standing around. Yeah. <laughs> Where was that story that I found from that book? Well, I wish I got to order this book, man. This sounds really cool. The Legend of the Wendigo, a tale from Native North America. It was oh. published in 1996. Oh, okay. But, like, this yeah, is, there's, uh... there's, I, you know, there's lots of stories, but they're not really recent, you know, um... No, no, not at all, no. Yeah. And this is, I think, this is just an editorial review of the book. Right. But I found it fascinating. I read you that little clip there about what happens when you kill a Wendigo. Oh, my. You better run like fuck. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Feet don't and fail I'm, me now. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to cut to the chase where it said he killed it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. When they used, they used fire to, to kill this Wendigo, but it says... The monster's heart explodes, and as his ashes oh, scatter, ooh, ooh. they become fucking mosquitoes. Oh, that was the, that's the Wendigo's revenge. Freaky so man. For that, mm-hmm. I guess. Hey, cannibalistic blood suckers. Hey. Right. That's yeah, like right? that's like when Oogie Boogie, when his thread comes loose and he deteriorates into like a bunch of little creepy crawly bugs. Right. Like it's just you know. Well, there always has to be something. It's like when you watch a movie in the very end, you know, it's like that. He's dead, but or you, you see that they come back to life. Right? Or you have that Same spider, shit. that spider phobia, and you see this big, big, fat, juicy spider crawling across the floor. You go to whack it, and a thousand little babies pop out. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Same shit. Oh, yeah, hate same that. Shit. So, so I wonder. Okay, with the whole mosquito thing, in the years that there's like a lot of fucking mosquitoes. Yeah. Does that mean a bunch of people have been whacking off when Nagels everywhere or whatnot? Maybe. So hey. it's everybody else's fault. Forest fire year. <laughs> I know. Well, I've I've found a few interesting things here. So I did find some stories. Mm-hmm. We'll go through the stories, but I like that tale about Jack Fiddler. So I'm going to tell you about Jack Fiddler yeah, in a second. Yeah. Um, Jack. Just to Let's clarify, Jack. just Jack. But just Jack. just Jack. But like when you say Windigo, I always thought it was Wind W I N D I G O, but it also goes by Wendigo. W E N D I G O. Yes. 
Um, and that's the way that I remember learning. But when and I the two spe- yeah, the, the two spellings are interchangeable though, right? Because they're describing the same thing, yeah. the same meeting. Um, sure. Potato, potato, blah, blah, blah. Tomato, tomato, blah, mm. blah, blah. I also, something funny. I remember hearing about Wendigo Tales when I was a kid from somewhere. <coughs> I don't remember it having the uh, cannibal cannibal connotation i i knew it more of a sasquatch type of dealio right that oh, okay. was yeah, yeah. that it was mm-hmm. from like you know indigenous people's beliefs and such but it came back to me years ago because my kids are a little older than yours but um there was a, a cartoon on tv called mona the vampire cartoon for all ages yeah mona the vampire was this kids cartoon and it would be on uh, cbc and it was about this girl who was like, it was almost sort of like a, a little mystery detective girl, um, kind of like Nancy Drew, sort of. And she had these... Nancy Drew, but a vampire? Yeah. And they were like, you know, 10 year olds or whatever. And they were always looking for yeah, yeah. mysteries and, and solving little mysteries and nothing too scooby doo or anything like that. But um, yeah. one one time they go camping, you know, a strange wind picks up and an elder that they were with or that they had encountered said beware of the windigo it's like ooh. wait where's my cool Ooh, yeah so no no gotta see if we can find that show i know mona the vampire how cool (laughs) sorry no that's no problem i am now medicated With Yay. the cough candy. I'm medicated as well with Bud Light. I got my spit. Yeah, I'm medicated by cough medication and Sherry's on the other spectrum of the alcohol spectrum. Yeah. It is Friday. <clears throat> it is Friday. Friday's all right for Friday. fighting. It's a fighting yeah. Friday. Bing, bing. And in this corner. Anyway. <laughs> See, now there's some Windigo stories on Creepypasta, but Creepypasta is known to be more made up. It's not really, I mean, okay. for what it's worth, okay, like, you know, you can't really substantiate most of these stories, but, right. you know, some of them sound mm, pretty authentic. I'm trying to find, like, is, I found, what is this one? Science, how stuff works. It says, how Windigos work. This <clears> is the actual, <throat> this is the title of the thing. Okay. It's weird. Again, it talks about cautionary tales, you know, and like, terror people <coughs> right. to dine on their family members. Ew. This is what it says. Stories of Wendigo served as cautionary tales to deter those who might be tempted to dine on their family members Barf. or neighbors during long winters when food was scarce. Barf. So, see, it's like one of those things. It said, wouldn't it be effective to warn your cohorts of cannibalism if the consequences were to turn into loathsome demonic monsters? <laughs> It's oh like, my yay. God. It says, even the Wendigo's visage, often described as devoid of lips or other soft <coughs> tissue. Like, ew. Hmm. Uh, like, like, um, like with the same sort of uh, ailments, I guess you'd have if you were frostbitten, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Things would fall off of you. That's so fucking creepy, man. Yeah. Like, and I still, again, you know, hopefully we get some people. I'm going to reach out to the Lactobani community because there's the Windigo Beach there. Mm-hmm. There has to be some stories. Um, I got to know. I got to know. We got to know. I know. You know? It's right. really cool. It's interesting shit, but I mean, oh my God. Yeah, where, why, who, how, what? I know. Anyway. <clears throat> well, like, for example. He, he thought a lot of himself, did he not? Because, like. I don't know if I can find it. Like, we haven't looked that far for, like, folklore and stuff. But, I mean, for example, one of the cooler things I heard, say, for the Bassett area, which is just north of there, right? So, mm-hmm, the Bassett mm-hmm. area is known for gold mining and stuff, right? And Oh, right. Which, yeah. Yeah. And legend has it 100,000 years ago. I don't know. A long time ago. Whatever, right? So, there were these... <laughs> yeah, yeah. There were these tribes in the area and two... Uh, two of the braves, one from each tribe, they were competing for the hand of the princess or a hand of, you know, whatever, right? They they were competing for Mm -hmm. this one bride or this one girl or whatever. And I guess there was a, there was a fight or a battle and I can't remember, uh, who, who the victim was, but apparently, uh, his head was crushed on the rock because there's a lot of rock faces there, right? 
and oh my God. Yeah, and, okay. and his head was mm-hmm. crushed during the fight. Uh, obviously, the guy who lost, uh, his head was crushed on the rock and uh, it cursed the land. So the blood that spilled out over the rock became the gold veins that now are what is beset. Oh, for sure. Yes. You know, I like, I like those. Those stories. are cool. Yeah, like, those are cool stories. So, I mean, yeah. like, if you had something like that for uh, the Wendigo in that area, like, you know, like, right. sure, that makes sense, Why right? Why do they call it, yeah. Why is it Wendigo <clears throat> or something there? Why do they have a beach? Some story yeah. of a sighting there or... Yeah. I wonder if the Who dudes, I wonder if the dudes that named their realty company Wendigo, if they knew with a real explanation. <laughs> Cannibalistic uh, yes. real estate agent. We're a cannibalistic company. We will chew the shit out and of you. And we're okay. We we're okay. We won't eat your children. <laughs> I know. At we're once. Giant cannibalistic monsters. But we're okay. Yeah. We're cool. Yeah, that's we'll get you really the bid for your house that you want. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> we will eat the. Maybe they will eat the competitors. Homeowners? <laughs> what homeowners? They had to leave town suddenly, yeah. but we're here. We're okay. <laughs> you want that house? We'll get it for you. <laughs> Don't look in the freezer. No, anyway. Yeah. So yeah. this uh, this part that I want to talk about, which is pretty cool, mm-hmm. um, this gentleman's name was Jack Fiddler. He had mm-hmm. a uh, Ojibwe Cree name, which, holy crap. Now, I always accidentally stick sherry with the, the with the tricky names but i'm gonna do this one okay because you, you don't because i couldn't read that and well. i don't do that till you deliberately but it's just funny now i end up with the tricky name so let's see if i can pronounce yeah, it yeah i know okay. uh zawa gabo so gobo gaba gabo gabu uh zika 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 <laughs> oi, oi, oi. Oi, oi, oi. <laughs> uh the definition the translation on that is he who stands in the southern sky and, oh, okay. That's lovely. and in the swampy cree definition it also means stylish man oh, so also lovely. jack fiddler was born uh it says 1839 and he he died september 30th in 1907 so within the last hundred and some odd years uh, it right. says he was a o- Ojima, which is chief and shaman of the Sucker Dodem among the Anishinaabe in what is now northwestern Ontario. <coughs> his oh, arrest, cool. his arrest in 1906, for the alleged murder of a Wendigo, and his suicide before trial marked the beginning of the imposition of the Canadian law on the Sucker people. Until then, wow. Fiddler's people had been among the last of the ar- Aboriginal people living in Northern America completely under their own law and custom. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, okay. <coughs> no, no, you said? Uh, 1906. Wow. <coughs> or he died in, uh, he died in 1907, I guess, by his own <laughs> hand, but he was arrested in 1906. Okay. And then it said that the background was he was born in the boreal forest of Upper Severn River near Sandy Lake, Deer Lake, and North Spirit Lake. Uh, it says his father, a mysterious figure from the East who was adopted into the Sucker Clan during a previous century, was a respected political spiritual leader. Uh, the Suckers were not the only group in the area. Like his father before him, sorry, Jack Fiddler became a famous shaman mm-hmm. for his alleged ability to conjure animals and protect the people from spells. So most importantly, the people in the region, he could allegedly successfully defeat the Wendigo, known as the cannibalistic spirit that would possess people during all too frequent bouts of famine and disease. Okay. So his claim to fame in his lifetime is that he defeated 14 Wendigos. Not one. Yeah, I just read that. Not two, <laughs> but four fourteen. Holy yeah. shit! Yeah. So apparently, some were yeah. some were sent against the people by enemy shamans. See, now here you got that whole skinwalker thing again, right? Like, yeah, you know, I evil, know. whatever. <clears throat> and others were members of his own band, who were taken with an insatiable, incurable desire to eat human flesh. So, but like, if they were famine stricken, I'm not playing the the devil's advocate here or anything, but. Right, you know, right. like maybe, I don't know, maybe 
Yeah. They were hungry. I don't know. Little snack.